What's up folks, this is Dan from Discern, and these are my thoughts on the new album from All Sons and Daughters, Poets and Saints. All Sons and Daughters is an acoustic folk CCM slash worship duo from Franklin, Tennessee. They have that classic folk sound of a female vocalist and a male vocalist seamlessly weaved together in harmony. These two singer-songwriters Leslie Ann Jordan and David Allen Leonard released their debut EP, Brokenness Aside, in 2011. They then released another EP, which they basically bundled together with their first EP and released it as a full-length album called Season One. And since then, they have released a third EP, which is really where they started to take off, a live album, and their second full-length album, which is self-titled. And now we have their third full-length album called Poets and Saints, an album inspired by poets, hymn writers, and saints from church history that have influenced and shaped the lives and understandings of both Leslie and David. To make a long story short, they basically traveled around to various locations around the world um, where they make, or well, where these poets um, or saints lived and worked. Uh, and they sought to learn about them, to discover who they were, how they thought, how they lived, how that can relate to our lives, to our experiences. Uh, you know, it's sort of a what can we learn from them, that type of thing. And in the truest expression of commercialism, they turn this global adventure, or more like a European adventure, I think, they turn this into a full-length album, a multi-week small group curriculum, and a book written by a pastor friend of theirs uh, who was along for the journey. Well, I didn't read the book, and I am not in a Poets and Saints small group, but I did, get, I did give this album a listen, uh, a few listens at least, uh, and I had a lot of thoughts, uh, a lot of confused and frustrated thoughts. In fact, I was struggling to piece together my opinions about this album, to form it into a coherent thought, uh, rather than just getting on camera and, and, and aimlessly ranting. And therefore this video was not ready to be released on a normal release day of last Friday. Sorry for that, folks. But I had the weekend to let it digest, calm down a bit, and hopefully I am not a rambling mess here. This album kicks off with the song Heaven Meets Earth. On this track, I think the lyrics are well-crafted, very image-evoking. The song mimics the birthing of creation as it, as it grows with its very composed crescendo. Uh, I also like how the song ends with a verse from the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Uh, it's really well done vocally, and the, the whole song is, actually. The harmonies between the male and female vocals are, are beautiful and feel grand, even, uh, even in their bare simplicity. This song has like a, a vibe and a similarity to Audrey Assad's recent album, you know, something like that. The music is more dramatic, uh, the arrangement feels more orchestral, um, even if it's, you know, not featuring orchestral instrumentation. Uh, the song just feels more refined than, than their past albums. Um, on the song You Are Love and Love Alone, I really appreciated how the song goes from feeling very straight, very sparse and rigid uh, from the guitar where it feels like it's just plucking only on the downbeats. It goes from that to having a, a jazzier swinging step to it as the piano and, and simple drum rhythm kicks in, um, throwing in the occasional offbeat and really transforming the song into a whole new feel, a whole new groove. It's really clever, actually. It's a unique way to transition the song into a new vibe. Um, it, you know, by introducing a piano and drum part. Um, those two sort of join the mix and suddenly the song takes a new shape. Um, you know, overall, this album has more musically dramatic and, and patient moments than in their past records. Um, like I said on the opening track, Heaven Meets Earth, it's a slow-moving, comfortable and calm approach, not rushing the crescendo, you know, taking time tastefully to develop the dynamics. The whole album, in a general sense feels this way, you know? There isn't an over-eager, frantic feel to any of the tracks where they seem to be getting ahead of themselves. Uh, instead, the, the music feels smoothly articulated and controlled. And some of this, I assume, just comes with the fact that this is their third full-length album. They're very comfortable and settled in with, the, the, with their sound by now. Um, 
and they seem to less heavily imitate their influences. Now it does seem like their sound is, is leaning nowadays more towards Gunger or Bethel music, where previously it felt like in the vein of Mumford and Sons and Civil Wars. I just appreciated how the album really took its time. Uh, the slow moments felt slow, the dynamically bold and colorful moments, they felt full. The, the wide range of dynamics uh, felt pretty well captured. And I'm also really glad they moved away from the stale and entirely beat to death sound of melodically singing oh for almost every hook or intro or outro or frankly any transition. It's a sound that was very popular years ago as worship bands everywhere, you know, were mimicking the style of Mumford and & Sons and, and Rend Collective. And people were so inspired, you know, that they overdid it and basically drove that sound into the ground. Um, as an example, the vocal part on the song, I Wait, I think that's a uh, really good vocal part. It's, it's melodically interesting, it's captivating, it feels a lot more purposeful and meaningful. It's not aimless or, or pointless as vocal parts like this used to be. Um, that sound used to feel like a filler. It was just tossed in and utilized when they, I don't know, didn't have any other ideas. But this song does it a lot better. It's um, certainly more tasteful. Now, that's what I have to say about this album musically. But lyrically, well, firstly in regards to the theme of Poets and Saints, uh, I noticed that this theme, uh, and in particular uh, the historical writings of these people, had a marked impression on the lyrics. Uh, there were a good amount of moments that pulled from old hymns and writings very directly uh, and crafted the music around that. Um, musically, I don't think it really related to the theme very much, but lyrically, I could see it. Unfortunately for all sons and daughters, uh, it was these lyrical moments that I found the most intriguing and most compelling on the album. In fact, there were times where I heard a lyric and I thought, hey, that was more unique than the others, you know, the imagery, the phrasing, it wasn't just dull Christianese. And then I found out, oh, they didn't write that part, you know. That was from an old writing, that was from someone's confessions or, or an ancient hymn. Perfect example of this, the bridge on the song You Hold It All Together is pulled from the writings of St. Patrick. And this bridge overshadows the lyrics in the rest of the song in terms of complexity and creativity. And well, <laughs> It just proves the point about the lack of lyrical talent in the group. The lyrics on this album um, are mostly ambiguous buzzword phrases. I mean, they're wildly simple and uninteresting at times, too. Uh, the track, This My Inheritance, the lyrics on the chorus are, well, first grade level, basically. All praise, all praise, all praise be to God. Always, always, and forever. Beautiful rhyme. Rinse and repeat. Again and again. Apparently when they took inspiration from poets and saints, uh, their rich vocabulary and profound writings didn't translate. Uh, that level of poetic creativity, wielding words with skill and purpose, that's nowhere to be found. Um, now, it's one thing for worship lyrics to be poorly crafted and creatively lifeless, but it's a whole more serious issue when they are theologically ambiguous um, and it becomes a dangerous problem. Keep in mind, this is worship music for the church, right? That, that's the context for these songs. Uh, so within the church, they are saying something about Christ. They're saying something about God. They're in a sense teaching teaching people, right? They're They're helping them. Well, this album so consistently misses opportunities to boast in Jesus and his saving work, the gospel message, that it starts to look like it's avoiding these opportunities. And as the album went on, my soul was just longing, and, and, you know, just please tell me about Jesus. Tell me about his saving work. This is worship music, right? You know, I was waiting and waiting, you know. And then the song, I Wait, gets going, and it says, I wait, there's one of the lines in here, I wait in the promise of God's amazing love. And that's all you get. The, the glorious gospel is just dribbled out in the stock phrase, God's amazing love. No details, no real talk. The song is just more bland, uninspired Christian mantras. And this song, you know, in its 
theological fogginess made me think of an example that, that hopefully clarifies, I guess, how I'm feeling. Picture the situation with me. Uh, you know someone who, who has an amazing story, and it's a, it's a story about something they personally experienced, a first-hand account. And you've heard them tell it before, it was riveting, it was exhilarating, and so you're spending time with them and you ask, you know, hey, tell that story again, you know, I, I love that story, I want to hear that again. And, you know, they respond like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, sure. Well, it starts out sort of, you know, slow and then has this dramatic moment uh, in it. And, yeah, I know, but but, but tell the story. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, um, um, I know, I know. Uh, it's it's amazing, it's, it's, it's just so unreal, um, but it's true, it actually happened. Yeah, I know, just tell the story. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's such a great story. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, <laughs> tell the story. After a while, you know, you would start to see the foolishness of acting like telling about the story is the same as telling the story. Uh, and it's the same here on this album. I wish they would have tried to write worship songs about Christ, about the gospel. I wish they would have boasted in the story, but instead they spent all their time reveling in their own emotions. Uh, my soul was just dying listening to most of it because, I mean, you know how people think, or, or a lot of people say, uh, I don't listen to Christian music anymore, I don't listen to worship music because it just it feels so fake. I feel like this is exactly what people are talking about. What are these songs actually about? <laughs> is this really about Christ and the gospel or is this just about emotional manipulation? Um, and I've seen them live. I have seen this this group at a worship night and and at a at a at a, um, a church and I still couldn't tell. Um, they didn't even have a clear gospel message presentation in their live show. A worship night at a church happened to miss the only message that gives the band, the music, and the building in which they're holding it any meaning. So to spend an entire worship album shrouded in mystery where I can't even conclude or discern what many of your lyrics actually mean concretely, and then to release it as if it's for the church, bundled with small group curriculum in a book, as if it's supposed to strengthen the church. Strengthen it in what? If it's not boasting and exalting in Jesus, I don't know why it's even considered for the church. Who's the bride of Christ? Uh, look, in closing, keep this in mind, I guess, just to help think through these thoughts. If you think, well, this is... Christian music. You know, the Bible talks about God's love and his, his goodness. It talks about these things using some of the same phrases uh, at times that these songs do. That's certainly true. That is. Uh, there are certainly aspects and features from these songs um, that are true to biblical Christianity. But a God that is loving is not specific to Christianity. Not in the slightest. A benevolent deity is so common in the vast majority of current and long since past world religions. What makes Christianity unique is that Christ is the one mediator between God and man. He's the one person who died to bring us to God, as it says in 1 Peter. Jesus is the redeemer who, who alone fixes our relationship with God. No other religion believes that. Uh, Christ is what makes Christianity unique. A benevolent God is not exclusive to Christianity. So if all you sing about in your Christian worship is that God is powerful, God is good, God is loving, you've stripped Christ from Christianity. You have a Christless Christianity, and you're basically left with moralistic deism. We have these rules and these ways to live, these morals that we follow uh, laid out in the Bible, and, and we believe in a God who's benevolent and, and loving, and he watches over us. It's kind of like a kind grandpa in the sky. Uh, that's not Christian. <laughs> you know, th th that is an aspect of the Christian faith, but it is also an aspect of many other faiths. What is unique to Christianity and, and what even the saints in heaven are praising God for, as, as you see in the book of Revelation, is the work of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 5, you know, they're singing in worship, worthy is the lamb who was slain, by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. It's the saving work of Jesus. It's the gospel message. That's the central 
focus of heaven's worship. And that should be the central focus of earthly worship too. I could say a lot more about this album, but I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, the music here was better than previous albums, marginally. Uh, I think on the musical front, each of their albums have gotten a little better, one by one. But lyrically, they haven't changed at all. It is painfully dull and almost meaningless worship lyrics. There are links in the description box for you to hear this album for yourself, and as always, a link to All Sons and Daughters Twitter. Thank you for watching this review. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Unlike this specific review, new album reviews, just like this, release every Friday, and new track reviews release every Wednesday. If you have a question or a comment for me about this album or about something else, uh, let me know. You can comment below this video. You can tweet at me at discernreviews. You can send me an email, discernreviews at gmail.com. Have you heard this album from All Sons and Daughters? Um, have you heard their previous albums? What do you think of this one? Where do you think it sort of stacks up? Um, and because this is a worship album, what do you think of the lyrics? Good? Bad? Somewhere in between? I look forward to hearing from some of you. Anyway, thanks again, folks. Hope this helps. See ya.